one Jinx, jungler. Leona for yeah. the bottom lane. That's exactly. what they've destroyed with in most of their games. Mm -hmm. I really like the way the bands are kind of evolving throughout uh, the 2014 season because when it started out, at least in the promotion tournaments, you're just kind of like, all right, fine. Siobhan and Mundo aren't banned. That means they're going to be the first few picks. So at least isn't banned is the first pick. That's still true. Yeah, sure. But the rest of them are still really creative. We were never seeing Pantheon bands. No. Kale was dominating who hadn't been banned yet. LeBlanc was a little bit unheard of. Yasuo hadn't been released. You know, like there's... There's this evolution of thing where there's kind of so many strong champions that we're no longer seeing like the the every single game. Yeah, six bands are decided. Yeah, because people sort of learned over the course of time. Oh wait, what are the things yeah. I can go and explore? Like I've seen so many games with like six mid lane bands, and you're like, oh, yeah. but that's still a common pick that mm -hmm. you pulled out there. Oh, it's Gragas who got through six exactly. bands, one pick, two picks, and it's like, oh yeah, it's like there's such a big pool yeah. in a lot of different locations. And I think uh, Nuketuck would be more experienced than that with anyone. I remember looking at like for some reason in League of Legends, especially in Europe. Mid laners play more champions than anyone else. Yeah. Like Alex and Nuke Duck and even like Man Cloud over in NA. Mm -hmm. Played like 15 or 16 different mid laners in 28 games. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you'll see six mid lane bands. That doesn't mean these guys aren't going to know exactly <laughs> what to play in that situation. Exactly. And well, speaking of what to play in the situation, looks like Snow already getting his zigs, one of like three champions he's played so far across five games. Yeah. Two zigs games. Uh, they've gone pretty well for him. The Jinx, you talked about that blocking for Sunny as well. Yeah. Big time pick for Sunny. I like the Ziggs pick. I mean, it seems like for NI, for TTD, they're kind of just getting exactly what they are good at. Yeah, what they played sense. before. They're going to be able to pick Leona whenever they want. I imagine they're going to pick it within these two so that they're able to use their last pick for a bit of a counter to like a general team comp, mm -hmm. uh, knowing that Zoro Zero is going to be on Renekton. So these these last two picks, these two picks here, maybe like Leona, and then their jungler, Vi, is absolutely available. Yeah. yeah, I'm actually surprised a little bit to or see Nocturne, Zoro Zero. Because he's El Nightmare. He actually has been playing it. It's on a solo really? queue record. Like even recently in the past couple yeah. of games, he's, he's been showing that. The reason I'm kind of questioning the Zoro Zero Renekton is mm -hmm. that like when NIP played SK Prime, yeah. like Zoro won his lane of Renekton and then stopped doing things. That and happened in the promotion game. tournament too. Yeah. Against the team formerly known as something that turned into Rocket. Yeah. yeah. KMT. KMT. Yeah. He's going to get there. Uh, Not anyway. going to pronounce the Polish name. No. Ooh. KMT? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's like Yeti's Malas team or something. Yeah. Yeah. But it's Rokat. We're good. Yeah, Moving so on. he did that on Renekton, too, and he needs to be able to make a big impact in the lane. He's against Mundo, obviously. Yeah. He's saving the jungle for the last pick because why not? Renekton had already been picked. Uh, tons of tankiness at that point, and now NIP needs to make sure they have enough damage dealers to cut through. Well, mm. Zed locked in Lucian here as well, so... Mm. I feel like it's a lineup you see a lot. It's a good generalist lineup, I feel. It's really generalist right now for NIP. There's a lot of, I would say, like, beefiness. They're a very tanky team overall. Hold on, what's going on here with Tick Tricky Duck? Are they tricking us? Is that a jungle mundo? They need a top laner, potentially. I, know. I mean, Phantom Joe has teleport right now for his summoners. Yeah. Like, maybe he changes it. Yeah, that feels like mundo summoners. Maybe it's mind gaming us because they feel like it. Well, Nightmare's definitely jungling. He's got smite. That is probably true. Yeah, I don't think he'll change that. And summoner. we had this talk earlier, like there's an L in front of his name, but we're just calling him Nightmare. And I was like, what if it's actually El Nightmare, like El Poro, or El Diablo, <laughs> right? But he just didn't. He wanted to have more space in case he had like a really long gamer tag beforehand, like Tick Trick and Duck. What if they wanted to put like seven letters in front of there? He'd be yeah. trying to save space. Tick Trick jumping clowns. Yeah, Tick Trick toasters or, and Duck. Or if it was just like Trick TD, El Nightmare. Oh yeah, that's probably too big. Yeah, TT Duck. Yeah, TT Duck El Nightmare. Right, Drop they, it. They did buy. There we go. That's so, buy, jungling. It is top lane Mundo. Mundo mm -hmm. Renekton, a matchup we've seen before. At least in Vino Strangers as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, these guys are running pretty much just like champions they've liked to run before the bands, not really yeah. removing a lot of comfort. The bands were not very targeted in a sense. Yeah. Especially if you look at NIP, like Pantheon, Kale, Annie. Those are probably the most generic bands you would see. And the fact that Cassian and Yasuo are banned on the other side, yeah. super generic. The Zed Lucian, even though they were the last two picks for NIP, mm -hmm. I would say uh, are way more towards comfort than they are about actual functionality. I think yeah. there's a little bit of a risk that NIP doesn't have enough damage to take down Phantom Joe if he gets farmed on Mundo. Mm, yeah. I think Lu Lucian in particular is one of the weaker AD carries against Mundo, because uh, sure, he can kite really well, but e especially something like the Culling, he's yeah. just going to hit Mundo in the face and he's going to keep coming at him. Not going to care too much. Yeah. The last game we saw the LCS, uh, or no, it was two ago, it was Gambit. Uh, Lulu shielded, it might have been a Renekton. Yeah. And the Culling broke the shield and like hit three more and pellets. It looked like it would heal her, I think yeah. was the saying that. Yeah, because the fish shield that said that? I, I want to say that was probably 
No, it would have been um, Deficio and D-Man. Joe? D-Man. Yeah, it was those two. It was D-Man, though. Probably D-Man. D-Man said it. He didn't heal him. It did deal damage. Deficio's going to be mad at you if it was Deficio. No, nope, he doesn't get credit. Okay. I already made fun of him once today. He's already mad at me. You did. That was super rude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know where it came it's from. completely uncalled for. <laughs> I don't know why I went for yeah. it. I don't even talk to him that much. Like I assume, I know, like, I assume we're know. friends. Just like yeah, because you're both League of Legends casters. You're like, yeah. of course we get along. Now there's camaraderie. Yeah. It's fine. It's one of these easy things to I do. I love you, Deficio. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he likes you too. You want to do a Q and carry me to Challenger? Yeah. He definitely does not. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we go, guys. On to the Rift. Mithy, defense spec, got that shield. Every time he dies, 50 points of shield. I remember that mastery coming under some fire yeah, early on. I know. And we were like, that's a terrible mastery. Almost no one would get that mastery because it, it's literally only when you die. Like, it's not yeah. even when you go back to base. Mm -mm. It's such a terrible gold value when well, you really think about, like, the overall game. But then the question becomes, how much can you get out of it in lane? Like, Mithy yeah. wants to fight someone at level one. And he's going to use that 50 health shield, theoretically, to gain an advantage in the lane so they can get level two first. And then by that being getting control of the lane, it's therefore worth it. Yeah. So if he walks into the jungle and takes a Ziggs bomb, <laughs> it's a total waste of time. <laughs> or if he dies a lot, yeah. he'll keep getting that shield In which back. case, he can get like 500 yeah, health in a game. Oh my gosh. I know, think about 10 it. 10 deaths makes it worth it. It's yeah. like taking revive. You just feel bad if you don't use it. A little bit, yeah. It's faster than recalling sometimes. I mean, look at that. He's got a lot of health to begin with with the Dorn shield. Very tanky man. Yeah. I don't want to all on that thresh if I'm tick trick and duck in the bottom lane. Hold on. Okay. All right, never mind. You can get the you know. can get the biscuit master with nine points in utility. Yeah. So he's twenty one defense. Yeah. Yeah. I just I just go twenty. I go zero twenty ten. I just want the shield mastery. Who needs tenacity? I don't. Uh, really. I think a lot of people like tenacity. Minions have I know. Stolen. I was kidding. Yeah, especially against to Leona. And yeah. Dukes, has some. They try to stun chain on you, so the tenacity is really, really beneficial. Oh, is he gonna take damage? No. Still got that shield. Shield watch for Mithy. Did you know? This is actually a really bad one. All right. Jinx Leona has two stuns and two roots. Um, and a slow kind of, but you can't get the slow and the stun on the same hold on, target. Hold on. Two stuns and two roots. But Leona yeah. has technically three crowd control. Because uh, the Q is a stun, and if you hit the center of the alt, it's two stuns. Yeah. And then there's also like a root on the E. Yep. And then Jinx has a root and, and a slow. Oh, and a slow. Yeah. 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 Technically, they could have two stuns, two roots, two slows, depending on the effectiveness of Leona. That's true. So there you go. Yeah. Lots going on in this game. CC heavy lane. Triple two lane. No. And see, look the at that shield. They're afraid to trade with Bam! Them. Tanks the rocket. Still almost full health. But look at how much damage they did to Sunny because Mithy was able to walk up there. Hits him again with the, with the chain. And now they have control of the lane. Yeah, and Mithy learned play at level one. He's just getting the auto attacks in. Mm -hmm. And yeah, look at this. TTT force back. Six minions to zero right now. And two of the melee minions are already dead. So it's two died denied CS so far. Yeah. Worth it. I'd Worth say it. so. Success granted so far. Mastery points. Success. Yep. You can see the jungle is clearing pretty normally. Elise is just ridiculous in speed. Sometimes I see Elise's even start with wards because they take such a small amount of damage in the jungle mm -hmm. that they can afford putting an early ward out. But he's not afraid of El Nightmare's counter jungle. The Nightmare. Yeah. I'm All just right. going to call them both names. I'm going to mix it up depending on how I feel. Okay. He gives me that versatility by putting the L in front of <laughs> It is a lowercase L, by the way. It looks like a capital I. It's not. And he even like re-tagged on live, like because they all put Tick Tick and Duck tags on their accounts, mm. and he kept the he L. Kept it, wasn't, the L. it wasn't like Nightmare got taken and he wanted to put characters in there. Yeah. Because like Bonaparte and Sunny renamed themselves. He might have been afraid that someone would take the name TTDL Nightmare if he was TTD Nightmare and steal his identity. That's messed up. Yeah. Shouldn't do that. It's on the big screen now. Got to make sure his identity stays safe. Freeze and Myth, he's still chilling in this bottom lane. I gotta point out again, Freeze had the highest KDA of anyone on his team. One death mm -hmm. across the BO3, like a 29 KDA or something ludicrous. And uh, Lucian was one of the champions he played. I believe Lucian was the game they lost and only died once, so he's been good at being safe. Yeah, and at least early on, they're doing a great job in that lane. Mm -hmm. They've kept Vine, Leon, or Jinx and Leona completely pushed back to their turret. And especially for Leona, I feel like she's kind of weakish in the first two levels unless your AD carry is much stronger than the other one. It's just not the case with the current incarnation of Jinx since her base health was nerfed. Yeah. Now that they're level three, Leona would have the potential to fight back, uh, but not inside a large minion wave. In that case, they lose it again. So I think, I think Tick Trick and Duck's going to be trapped in their turret for a little while longer. 
Maybe if they can pull Nightmare around, he'll be able to turn something back on this one. Yeah, he's, but he's on the wrong side of the map. Yeah, yeah. Vault Breaker does not go that far. That would be absurd. Not even Nocturne goes that far. Nope. Not even Mandrop goes that far. Only, Only Shen. Only Shen. And... Summoner Teleport. Yep. Yeah. Recall, but it goes the wrong way. Mm-hmm. Recall will technically cover that much distance. Just not to a turret. Well, if you count the Fountain Laser a turret. Alright. All right. I don't know if you do. Nope. It's a laser. Yep. The embodiment of a laser. Nuke Duck's doing pretty well, too, actually. Yeah, he's actually winning his lane. Usually, he's usually Ziggs pushes in Zed early on with yeah. Harass, but Nuke Duck is doing the opposite. There's actually a lot of things that oh, that Nightmare has to respond to right now because all of his lanes are getting pushed in. So the early game pressure from NIP is definitely working. Since everyone is pushing together, it is therefore safer for each individual one because it's not like there's a, a singular target that Vi can click on. Everyone is benefiting from this. So even yeah. if one lane gets ganked and punished, overall, the net is still positive for NIP. Yeah, look at this. It's a 400, 500 gold lead right now for NIP. First Blood would barely equalize that at this point. So... It's also worth pointing out that up until Zoro Zero ate that potion, every single lane had forced consumables out of their opponent without using them themselves. Mm, so not so they're only was there really the bullying lane. these lanes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Twelve minions here in the top lane. Of course, support AD carry here for TTD. Actually, Sunny getting lower and lower. Look at that health bar down to about a quarter. Just going. Yeah. It's just the laning phase, and I, right I from question. the start. Yeah. Uh, especially because Mithy got so much damage down on him early. A lot of people might not realize that when you level up, the health you actually generate on level is dependent on your current health when you do level up. So mm -hmm. since Sunny was low at level one, that means all his subsequent levels have kept his health low. Uh, ooh, flashes over the Flame Chopper. Nightmare's not going to show up in that one. So not much that CC's going to land, and NIP going to be safe. But Nightmare is kind of freeing up ooh. this lane, pushing it down. Aaron might try and dive this if they can get the right kind of catch. If he lands a cocoon on Bonaparte, he might kill him. Puts the damage down. There comes the melee yeah. form. Execute doesn't quite land the damage. Spidlings won't find it, but this is risky. Bonaparte is going to al be allowed to go upwards. Amen just forcing him away, saying, you give up turret control. And this is going to be a lot of dead minions. Yeah. It could actually be oh. a dead turret if they want to. All Ammon is doing right now is completely zoning them out. There's a ton of dead minions. Yeah, they're just trying to withstand the laning phase. They don't even want the turret right now because they're winning so many lanes right now. If they Got just it. keep farming like this, they're going to get a huge advantage. They could hit six before yeah. TTD hits five down there. They could. It's going to be a gigantic, gigantic difference. And... Look at the CS, too. Oh, God. 64 to 32. Fully doubled, exactly. Top lane's 50% bonus as well. This is going mm -hmm. so well in just laning phase. And to think, I was like, you know, I don't know if I like the Renekton. You know, he went laning phase. They didn't do much for it. Right. And well, the they're whole just dominating so hard. The whole team has went fairly heavy into the early game right now. Yeah. Lucian versus Jinx is very much like an early game crush you versus a bit of a late game matchup. Mm -hmm. I know Jinx has actually had a lot of early game power recently, but it, it she's pushed more towards late game now that she has the base health nerfs. Yeah. Obviously, Zed against Ziggs. Zed is the one matchup that would be a little bit troublesome, but Nuke Duck is just outplaying Snow yeah. right now and keeping him pressed back. And we don't even really need to get into Zoro Zero versus Phantom Joe because Renekton beats him up. Yeah. Because he's Renekton. Yeah. Well, I feel like the NIP mid laner is, is kind of set up to win this matchup, though. Like, of all teams to nuke, you might as well nuke Duck. So you're saying that would be if, like if he was playing Ziggs. Yeah. He could be like, oh, he's the nuke Duck. Yeah. I mean, it still works. Or you're saying, like, you can't nuke the nuke Duck. Really. Yeah. Yeah, okay. You know, there's a, something there with nukes and ducks. and Something. It, I didn't plan it well enough. I'm yeah, he's sorry. playing like a ninja. I knew this matchup for like two weeks, and I didn't come up with a joke <laughs> You're in time. To come up with something. Like, and now I'm, I'm doing it now. Like, I did no preparation. Because he's against Snow. Yeah. Who's still on the wrong Zig skin. I mean, he could try and create like a nuclear winter. Ooh. Yeah. All right, we're good with this one. Well, I mean, Freeze in the lineup. <laughs> it'll so it'll, go, to, it'll, it'll be absolute be zero zero. <laughs> All right, we we we're done here. <laughs> It was horrible. There's I'm, no more. I'm sorry. It's a sunny day out, though. Unfortunately, man, there's so many things. I'm gonna stop during the commercial. I'm gonna come stop. up with more. All right, we're back in the game. Here we go. Phantom Joe getting hit. Zoro Zero though is gonna find Nightmare. The ult's gonna come across. Pops Dominus. Phantom Joe half HP. Ultis as well. Now can Zoro Zero live? Has Flash. Oh. He's still fighting. Can he take down Phantom Joe? He's still burning down. This is gonna be close. Flashes mm. still goes down. Phantom Joe takes it. Yeah, he turned a lot of damage around. And because I think he surprised himself with his damage, he ended up sticking around too long. Mm -hmm. Once he scared Vi off, uh, there was a 
small chance he would have been able to flash and at least burn Phantom Joe's flash to continue the finish. Yeah. But the greed stopped him from doing that. Doesn't matter how much damage you do to your opponents if you don't finish off. And the dragon's gonna go down as payment for the top lane gank. But take trick and duck. First blood that's gonna help the top lane and alleviate a lot of that pressure. Mm. And we look as they both went back to base, you've got the makings of a sunfire versus the makings of a Tiamat. Mm -hmm. And also there's an extra cloth armor thrown in there for good measure. Mm -hmm. It's going to make it a little bit harder for Zoro Zero to pressure Phantom Joe in the lane. And it will come to a point here where Zoro Zero is going to continue to get stronger at farm, but probably not be able to kill Phantom Joe. And okay. that will be the moment in the game where Zoro Zero has to transition down to the rest of the map. I almost never see Zoro Zero lose lane. This is one of those occasions where he's just not going to lose it. Nice oh, stun! Oh, the cocoon lands. Snow taking so much damage. Amin not going to go for the kill. Oh, Nuke Duck got it. Yeah, ignite. he kicked him with the Ignite, like, really late. So you uh, would have thought it would have been up early, but that's why they're able to walk away with the kill. Really clutch finish there as the jungle support arrived. I didn't realize he had ignited him. I was like, all right, well, nice try right here. Zoro Zero now, Phantom Joe in the fight. I mean, you know, initially, there we go. Okay, the ultimate oh, there's no Widow. reaction ult. Yeah, he got, a, he got about 15 seconds there. Phantom Joe not going to go in for the kill with this one, though. He's probably just content getting his farm back a little bit. Okay. This is the first time in about 10 minutes where Phantom Joe hasn't been pushed straight into his turret. He's going to try to retrieve the minions from under it when it comes in eventually anyway. Freeze and Mithy putting some damage on this turret now. Level 7 versus level 6 and 5. So a small lead here yeah. uh, in XP as well as gold. The S-Rider's yes, vamp chapter getting important as well. And a monstrous lead in CS. Good yeah. Lord. 58 to 100. He's actually just in a really, really, really good pace, actually. We don't yeah. really see scores this high this early from AD carries. There's been almost no pressure back at him. Uh, yeah. Bonaparte. I don't even think he's tried with the Zenith Blade this whole game. There's been almost no zoning potential from Leona. And here's another gank top. Well, no ulti from Phantom Joe, but the ulti comes in from Nightmare. Zero, zero. Not in a good spot. Does not have Flash either. Doesn't get the damage. Nightmare picks up another kill for the team. They're trying to get the turret down bottom too. Stun up on a Mithy. Turret goes down. The nuke's coming through as well. Bonaparte not in a good place. Mithy steals the kill. And here's the chase from Freeze. Oh. Lands the cooling. Sunny. 100 HP. Flash of the way. Safe. Yep. But his turret's gone. Yep. So that's unfortunate. A little bit. And also a support's dead. So overall, this up and down trade is definitely benefiting NIP, but I feel like that's because they were just winning the lane 2v2. As far as the jungler interaction goes, it's been pretty even. Nightmare and Phantom Joe have done a really good job keeping Zoro Zero down a little bit mm -hmm. uh, and trying to make it so even if he wants to become involved mid-game, he might not be able to. Yeah. But in the bottom lane, it's probably a little more disastrous that Sunny is down so much. Because yeah. Jinx will not be a factor as long as Lucian can just go and kill him, especially since Jinx is such an immobile AD carry. Mm -hmm. I would say the gank trades benefit NIP overall. I think so. And the yeah. question for me, though, is so what happens when Renekton fully falls off? The Munda becomes yeah. really hard to kill. Because you said in pregame, uh, Nuke Duck and Freeze not that well equipped to kill a mm -hmm. Mundo, and that's mm -hmm. exactly who's getting farmed on TTD. It's true, and he doesn't necessarily have to build that much magic. Uh, because yeah. Amin... Sure, we can get a little farm down Elise. That'll help trying to take down the uh, But it all really depends. I think if Freeze continues to farm and kill at this pace. <laughs> <laughs> that was just rude. That's awesome. Yeah. We knocked him into it. It was a gift. Yeah, if Freeze continues to farm and kill at this pace, I think he'll just be strong enough to kill Mundo. I mm. think. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, but aside from that, I also think the game's not going to get late enough for that to be a problem at the moment. Did he steal that too? No, no, that was given over. Yes, it was. Snow was far away, and he's like, just ult it. I'll, I'll sunlight it for you. That worked yeah. out okay. I was super confused there for a second. Yeah, it was weird. Because Nuke Duck generally played. No, okay. <laughs> um, I just realized something. Sunny is paired with the uh, the solar support tank. Yes, yeah. it is true. The, like, he gets to use sunlight the entire time. There's so much gold here, I didn't even think of it. Nuke Duck still You have a strange lane. definition of what gold is. Uh, we call this something much Comedic different. gold. No. <laughs> I just no. a new type of joke, by the way. Uh, Zyrene showed them to me. It's uh, okay. it's okay. Uh, kid jokes. They're not anti-jokes. They just they don't have a real punchline. First of all, uh, Lightmare trying to run away. Red buff on uh, him. Gets it. Stun gets out. Yeah. Stun landing because I believe there was a tick of cooldown left on Nightmare's Flash. It's just getting up right now. They would have killed him. Bottom lane freeze continues to finish. I'm actually okay that we got distracted because I don't really want to know what these jokes are. Because <laughs> it sounds like you're just talking. And you're just like, that was a joke. There <laughs> no punchline. Really jokes. Yeah. Well, Nightmare is still getting invaded on Amon. Really wants to make this happen. Flash Cocoon goes off. Zed follows the Flash. Nightmare. Pop. 
<laughs> Down he goes. Nuke Duck getting the red buff for his troubles. Nuke Duck's getting really strong too, and he's going to be able to roam around. One thing that Snow hasn't done, despite farming very well on Ziggs, he has applied almost no map pressure. Ziggs, yeah. Ziggs, when you pick him, is all about just pushing lanes, and the absolute opposite is happening for Tick, Trick, and Duck. Oftentimes, you'll see Ziggs use his ultimate on side lanes even, just to keep the waves moving. He's doing none of that. He's using his ultimate to secure blue buff. He's being very selfish with his farm, and it's allowing Nuke Duck to get going a little bit too much. Yeah, we just saw Nightmare get invaded twice in a row at his red add on his race. Second one resulted in a kill. Uh, meanwhile, as you talk about, Snow is he's being selfish with his farm. He took the, mm -hmm. the wolf camp down. He's likely to go for a race when they respawn. We'll see what else he can do for his team here. Stopped up, uh, got the early Seeker's arm guard to survive the lane. But, you know, as you said, no no pressure here. Zoro Zero, despite the two deaths, he's he's maintaining a minion lead, 140 to 111. He's he's staying completely up with Banner yeah. Joe. I think that's part of the reason he took the deaths is because he's continuing to play so aggressive. Yeah. I really wonder how that duel is going to continue now that Phantom Joe is going back to get more because I want to say that Mundo is pretty much the sole hope left for Tick Trick and Duck. And he's going to have to get involved fairly soon. This could be the dragon fight, you know? He's got to teleport up. There's also Zoro Zero running to the top lane. So if Tick Trick and Duck wanted to, they could force some type of 5v4 in that dragon pit. But they're yeah. definitely peeling back because there's just so much accumulated pressure that NIP has put on the mid and the bottom lane. It looks like they want to continue that towards the mid lane specifically here. There's a few minions alive. Those are dying to mines right here, though. And they say, you know what? Never mind. There's no red buff up. Ooh, Nuke Duck's roaming towards top. That's where they're going. Yeah, and they're going for the sole strong person on Tick, Trick, and Duck right now. Blade of the Rune King is completed, but it's a lot of armor on Phantom Joe. I wonder if that would even kill him if they tried to dive him under the turret. They're just trying to secure the objective. And they get it. No one rotated yeah. in time for TTD, so that's two turrets to zero so far. Three kills to two. Dragon previously warded out by NIP. They know that's not getting countered. There's the Ziggs ulti coming. Yeah! It does remove the minions. Stops the push. But also hurts them for the upcoming dragon fight. Which they're going for. Yeah, that's exactly what NIP kind of wanted. They're like, all right, you're not going to defend it. We'll take the turret. If you defend it, we're going to go take this. Uh, and they're killing it so fast with their ward control. Wow. Sure, sure, Tick, Trick, and Duck could probably come around with five people and get a fight, but they would have had to like preempt it or something. Yeah. Because NIP has too much map control. And they just weren't there. But you're right. Like Zed and Rectum were both top. Like, it was a potential 5v3 if they just decided to go for it yeah, instead. Yeah, they would have done it like right away. But if you remember... Nightmare had been moving up there to try and like support the yeah. push. Yeah. And I would say that was just a a mistake by Tick Trick and Duck to not try and take objectives. Overall here, they're losing their lanes slowly. And sure, NIP is an early game team, but the pace at which, at which they're falling behind isn't equal to the pace at which their champions will get stronger. Yeah. So they're losing this game at the moment. And they need to start securing their objectives or at least stopping the bleeding a little bit better. We'll see if TTD can do that, can find something else to turn this game back to their favor. Zoro Zero, a level down behind Phantom Joe, and just goes in through the minions and doesn't even flinch at all. Very, very close to 12 there on Renekton. Not an important level, but for what it's worth, he's about to be there. Yeah. He's roaming down towards the river, puts a but he's, he's just staying in lane anyway. He's not actually doing anything to make moves off this. You know, I'd say 12 isn't an important level, but there's plenty of 12-year-olds that probably say it's an important number. Okay. There's 12 months in a year. Thanks. 12 is also a dozen. There's many uses for that Not number. Not a baker's dozen. No, that's 13, which is also an important number. It's an unlucky number. Yeah. You know, 13 is unlucky, reason. so should the letter B. Because B is like a scrunch together 13. Hold on. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> if your name is Bob, you're screwed. Then your name's actually 13013. Yep. Okay. Well, no, it's 13 something, because you don't capitalize the other letters. Oh, I was thinking, Bob. <laughs> it's really loud. <laughs> if someone yells your name, yeah. <laughs> that's really unlucky. That's really unlucky. Bobby's got it even worse. Yeah. Man. Stop! <laughs> we had a good you end point. started it. We had a good end point. <laughs> that was the time to move on. Well, Zoro Zero actually not in the best spot. Forced to pop Dominus, Phantom Joe. Ah, they're trading blows, but I feel like this is still pretty decent for Mundo. We'll see where it pans out. No, the Ignite makes it happen. Flash away from Mundo, still getting chased out. Zoro Zero, he's a Q away. Flash gets him. Oh my gosh, Zoro Zero still winning the fights. So what happened there was there's so much armor stacked on a Phantom Joe 
and a completely underestimated amount of magic damage that comes out from Renekton. His ultimate, Dominus, does so much magic damage, the Ignite stopped the ultimate from Phantom Joe, and he surprised him. Additionally, the majority of Mundo's damage is magic, mm -hmm. and the Spectre's Cow on Zoro Zero stopped yep. him from taking that back. Just completely removed the threat there. Awesome play right there. Yeah. Zoro Zero still winning the matchup, despite all the jungle attention. Every successful mm -hmm. gank that Nightmares had was a kill onto Zoro Zero. Doesn't even matter for the NIP top laner. Shoves another wave, recalls back after taking double golems, 195 minions on him, keeping pace with his AD carry, who won his lane even harder than that. And I gotta say, he's he silenced my doubts on his Renekton play. He's yeah. really working it here. That's That was a really impressive move, being able to come back from all of the adversity he's taken. Additionally, I like the Black Cleaver on Nuke Duck that just got completed. Since we were talking about how NIP is mainly a physical damage team, mm -hmm. um, being able to get that Black Cleaver for himself is almost like giving a Last Whisper's worth of armor penetration to the rest of the team if yeah. they're focusing on the right targets. Which means that Freeze can, can focus on finishing a Trinity Force without feeling guilty that he can't kill Mundo. Since if Nuke Duck is to hit Phantom Joe a little bit in, say, an isolated scenario, they will shred his armor enough that Freeze and Zora Zero will be able to finish it. Ah, that's going to be impressive. We'll see how this pans out in the team fight. Zero Zero happy to stack. Or not Zero Zero, sorry. Uh, Nuke Duck happy to stack the armor shred for everybody else. And it looks like the pressure now is to the mid lane. Phantom Joe and Zoro Zero still going to trade blows up top, but it is getting better and better for Renekton, even still in this game. Yeah. He's Bottom got, lane stopped. I feel like Renekton peaks around 25 or 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's when he's just the super, super scary man, especially with his Ravenous Hydra right now. Uh, and the recent fear that he put into Phantom Joe. He's got a lot of, of power play uh, left to do. He's actually going to find Mundo over the, the double golems as well. And he's going to jump the wall and help his team out near the mid lane. He's going to get there before Mundo will. He's going to run into a lot of people. I don't think he cares. I think he's Renekton. He's got his ultimate up. Here we go. Puts the stun on a Nightmare. Ziggs Bomb shows up. Zero Zero is kind of around everybody else. And finds a Lantern. It's kind of a weird exhaust for Bonaparte. I don't think he needed that one. Yeah, that's fantastic for NIP because Bonaparte's going to want that back the next time Zed alts his AD carry. He's going to yeah. want to use his exhaust on Nuke Duck, and now he can't. So Zoro Zero with a successful, threatening roam right there. Oh. Nuke Duck. Yeah, his minions get swept away. You talked about Ziggs being able to keep these side lanes in good shape. Mm -hmm. Does that here. Nuke Duck there. sweeping uh, wards away. Looks like blue buff. Something that they want control over in the near future. Dragon's up in a minute. Zoro Zero just finished pushing a lane top, so he's roaming around again. I'm also looking at Sunny's build, and I feel like he's just starved right now. He is. Normally, Jinxes want to go uh, Bloodthirster Phantom Dance or Bloodthirster Static Shiv, mm -hmm. and then start continue farming and clearing waves. But Sunny is so paranoid that he's fall behi fallen behind in this game that he's trying to finish out. Yeah. Uh, because otherwise, he doesn't feel like he can do damage. But the problem with that is he won't do that much damage without attack speed on someone like Jinx, who is so auto attack behind. It's true. It's basically like. On his like second back where he died again, he just picked up a pickaxe because he needed items. Yeah. And so he's like, well, I already got pickaxe. It's only like 1400 for a last whisper. And basically said, screw it. That missed. It did. That one yep. too. Good mm -hmm. dodging by NIP. Little bit of panic coming from Tick Jerk and Duck. That's the second, I'd say, pretty big misplay by Bonaparte in the last minute. First, yeah. he was using his exhaust on the Zoro Zero's Renekton. Uh, when there was no threat of dying, it's almost like he was just trying to slow him down. But he's Leona with a bunch of crowd control. And yeah. now he's burned his ultimate, which means there's no realistic way for them to threaten Dragon, and NIP gets it again. Amin's going to be left to take up some of that. Mithy going to grab XP nearby. Zero Zero still putting pressure in this top lane. He is not leaving. 229 minions. He's pulling yeah. attention, and nothing's happening because of it. Instead, actually, it's Phantom wow. Joe who's used to split against Nuke Duck on the bottom side. Hmm. Well, I suppose they want him against Zed because they feel like everyone else would die. It's uh, true. Zoro Zero. I wonder if he can get out of this one. Thresh is going to try and get to him with the lantern. Let's see what moves he can pull. We'll see. Does he have another dash? He does. Yeah. And a lantern. Wow. Yeah, yeah, getting yeah. a second dash. <laughs> that was nice. That was nice. <laughs> that was oh. Really well done. He was probably feeling so smug after that move. Yeah, too. I would. <laughs> and then you looked away. And I was yeah, I was like, hey, he's out. Happen. Normally, I'd see the, the ultimate fly out first. Oh, poor Zoro Zero. And he had no armor to deal with that either, which is one of the reasons it executed him. I'm sure that was very close to the break point of Jinx Alt finishing him or not. Oh, yeah. Um, but they caught him. You know, good thing he started yeah. building towards Last Whisper. That 35 AD is what it took. You're absolutely right. If probably he would have had his heal, I don't think he would have died. It probably was. Getting back in the game. Oh, man. Yes. 
Oh, there we go. Snow sweeping away some of these little Wraith guys. Nightmare's going to help clear the rest of them out as well. Let's see where people go. Oh, man, going to put another ward down. Like, right now, NAP are trying to control the top side of the jungle. But outside of, like, doing cool things in laning and, like, taking dragons, I haven't seen them do a lot here. Like they've they've been they've been at like four to three mm, or four to I two see. for a while and like they've been pushing lanes but yeah turrets haven't fallen for a long time and they're just getting dragons. That was, what's he what's his what's his game plan here? Shadows. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, fight in the jungle as well. I'll get your point. Ooh, lantern gets away. Slow oh. comes out. Sunny's not in a good spot. Goes down. Bit overextended there. Zigzag yeah, doesn't help much either. Absolutely, it was almost like. The Lantern being out was a feint, making Sunny think he could go aggressive because all NMP was doing was going to retreat, but they kind of turned it around on him because he tried to chase too far. Mm -hmm. uh, to get back to your point of NIP, though, and how they don't really seem like they're doing much, three of these players are from Lemon Dogs. Yeah. Or wait, two, three? Nuke Duck, Zero Zero, Zero Nuke Duck, and Mithy. Mithy. Yeah. Three of these players are from Lemon Dogs, who last season, despite being very successful in the standings in Europe, weren't a team that initiated a lot of action. They were one of the slower playing teams that generally waited for the enemy to put themselves in a bad position and then would just kind of win slowly or win late game team fights because they outfarmed you. That's what they're doing right here for Tick, Trick, and Duck. Yeah. I think they're just continuing to split push their waves. Whenever Tick, Trick, and Duck makes a move, NIP will capitalize. Or when it's like 30 or 40 minutes into the game, they're going to make one decisive move that is well thought out and had a lot of time behind it, and then they're going to go. I think that's just kind of what you expect from the NIP team. Okay. Well, what they're looking for right here with four sweepers is maybe a bit of a barren play. They could, yeah. That will be a later game move. They have been... Zoro Zero has been exploring that jungle for quite a while. Yeah. Trying to clear things out. They, they'd have to get a bit more in there. It's very hard to push against Ziggs, and he's been setting up shop in the mid lane. Once they get the mid turret down, mm -hmm. I think NIP will have a better chance of clearing out the wards in that jungle. Well, another yeah. attempt here by Nuke Duck that does take down hey. Phantom Joe. So that push is finally started to work, and that was with a Randwind's done, I think. And we got the jump oh, on the dear. top side as well. Sunny not in the best spot. Ulti comes across, doing some damage to throw a zero. No. One shot to go, takes him out. Bonaparte getting the kill credit, and Sunny barely lived. Wow, right there. Zoro Zero's got to feel so unlucky in that case. He was trying to solo Sunny. Just missed. I think Bonaparte made a very nice move there, keeping him alive. And that will delay NIP's inevitable pushing a little bit longer because once Mithy ran up there, they lost pressure in the mid lane. It means their mid lane pushes longer, which means mid lane doesn't die. Um, yep. And Snow can maintain control of that mid turret for long. Good play so far by these guys. They're barely sticking in it, yeah. I'd have to say. They're yeah. lo they lost their lane so badly, especially the bottom lane. Ooh, mid lane's getting close to dying yeah. though. It's taking damage slowly over time. If Snow's ever not right there to sweep the waves away, they're not going to get their, themselves in. It seems like they're they're not they're not finding ways around the zigs at the very least. I know you said they normally play slowly, yeah. but they're certainly like with this kind of a lead. I feel like they'd be able to take turrets. They finally get another one. They brute force it down six, no eight thousand gold actually. That's a pretty sizable margin. It's getting bigger and bigger, yeah. and especially since Zoro Zero is the only one dying, he's not giving much gold back. Uh, obviously, the bounty system has been changed a little bit, so when you die, gaining minions will slowly increase your bounty. Yep. But it's not to an absurd margin. He's worth less than 300 gold when they kill him. And he's not giving that much back to Tick, Trick, and Duck. Yeah, it's about, what, 10 minion waves for a death, roughly. Yeah, it's every every 100... Every 1,000 gold is a death. From oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Waves exactly. are about 100 gold apiece. Ooh, waves roughly. are a bit more than 100 gold, I think. Uh, At this point in the game. At this point, yeah. Yeah. Especially with cannons. Zoro Zero locked up here. A lot of CC burned on him. Kenny Getaway does not have flash. Pops the ulti. So they can damage. He is up soon oh, nice and gets knock. knocked around. Nice play. Mm, the Ziggs knock right there, stopping him getting to the lantern. That happened again. Cleaver last whisper, well. I believe it. Yet, uh, the first kill, by the way, was right after, after he picked up his last whisper. And since that point, Phantom Joe hasn't been able to deal. And unless Tick, Trick, and Duck solves that problem, they're not going to win at all, I think. Seems unlikely. 8,000 gold still separating. NIP finally now in control of their opponent's blue buff. Dragon up in 10 seconds as well. It's going to be Nuke Duck on a blue buff. He's been chilling on the right-hand side lane for the last, like, 10 minutes or yeah. so. 4 zero, zero. So Nuke Duck, you know how we said we, he had, didn't have too much impact when he played LeBlanc? Yeah. I'd say he's having a much bigger sway in this game. Completely agree. Yeah, he 
took on who was kind of the hope destroyed. of Tick, Trick, and Duck and Phantom Joe mm -hmm. with at least a pretty decent Mundo start, who was yeah. stacking a lot of armor against a heavy physical team. Uh, it's like, who's going to kill Mundo? Nuke Duck. Yes, that is absolutely <laughs> the answer. Because he got so Mundo. far. I feel like if he oh, would have fallen behind, uh, that wouldn't have happened. So, Sword of the Divine. Yes. For Nuke Duck. We were talking about this earlier. We were. Yes. We'll make sure there's not a huge fight that's about to happen, and then we'll explain it. So first okay. off, first off, one of the big reasons Blade of the Rune King is so popular on Zed is during his death mark, all the damage he does, 50% of that will then trigger at the end of it. Blade of the Rune King active helps with that, but also the fact that Blade of the Rune King does percent current health, since you're using that when they're near the top of their health, you're doing more damage, which is then added into the back end of your mm -hmm. kill, and that happens as well. So why not just have a bunch of active items that can be front-loaded so your the end of your burst is larger? Yeah. Sword of the Divine, spot apart. He's fine. Don't worry about it. Rocket's coming through. NIP running away. Stun on a Nightmare. I still don't know if they want this fight. Lantern comes through. Culling's going to back him off. Red buff's still up, though. NIP. Yeah. They're still trying for it. Oh, Sword of the Crit. Divine. One, two, three. And yeah, he didn't even need the death mark. No. Fight on the other side of the map. I don't think it's happening. I thought it was for a second. <laughs> Nightmare got red buff, though. All right. Amon had smite was around-ish. I don't we know if he was in range, we though. We didn't get to finish our Zed story. Yeah. You use the Sword of the Divine, so you're critting during your death mark, which I guess was a, a fairly straightforward conclusion. But that's why. Yeah. If he wanted to add another super offensive item and be like no defense, which he probably doesn't need since he can kill Mundo, uh, it would be a Ravenous Hydra, because you could use that active during the ultimate as well. But... Motor car right. played into the box wall, so he has slowed down. Rocket's not quite gonna land. Ignite's still taking away. Jump in from Freeze, gets the kill. Nightmare's still in an okay shape. Oh, nice one right there. Locks up, doesn't matter too much to jump in, though. Now, onto Zero Zero. Looks for Snow. Can he get the kill? Not quite. Knocked back into turret range, but he's a tanky man. Filet now hooks. gonna land on Sunny. More damage from Freeze. Cocooned as well. One, two, gets him. Knocked around, doesn't get a lantern. They don't care though. Nuke Duck, look at the damage, finds the kill. Another man goes down. NIP really turning it on. Yeah, the game just got ripped wide open. I think once Nuke Duck just realized that he could kill Mundo whenever he wanted, the third time he did that, he then started collapsing down. Tick Trick and Duck started to panic a little bit. They started to try and look for fights. And NIP is just so much stronger at this point. Mm -hmm. Mithy was landing all of his death sentences. It continued the chase for NIP. And that was kind of their move that we talked about, where they farm for a little while. Then later in the game, around 30 or 40 minutes, don't die to this. You got it. Wow. He just stayed and was like, I'll life steal tank it, dog. Yeah. That was close. Yeah. I think the only thing he could have done there is continue auto attack. Like, if he runs away, there's a chance he still gets hit by the bomb and dies because he hasn't life stolen, and he'd lose the blue. But if he stays and hits, he'll life steal enough that the ultimate from Ziggs will kill him. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. But the center of the Ziggs ult does do more damage. He didn't kite backwards, did he? No, he landed right in the middle of it. I think the ring is 80%. The outside yeah. ring is 80%. Right, so it's not that much of a loss. Yeah. Whatever. It worked out. Nuke Duck planned it. 5 0 and 1. And he built a sight stone. What? All right. Yeah. He wants to split push some more. It's a little bit of health. Yeah. As well. That is. I think that's more of an item to show off, but it will have its own functional uses. Since all he is doing is split pushing, it yeah. will give the team additional warding. Yeah, the thing is, he's ahead. And he also like, wants to be able to sweep as well, so. I don't think damage helps him anymore. No, he's killing he him. He already kills Mundo. Guardian. Yeah. I would have kind of expected a Guardian Angel to be the last time yeah. on Zed. That's the typical thing. But I think he is so not afraid of dying to anything right now that the little bit of health is enough defense, and the wards in themselves will be defense since he will avoid getting ganged up upon. Yeah, I see it. I think it'll work out. Yeah. Well, Brand I see it too. Staring me right in the face. Nightmare does have a random zone in here, so the tankiness via the armor is still coming in through. Snow did get a fairly early zone. He has only died once so far in this game. That was one mid lane gank a while ago. Mm -hmm. These guys backing off again. The jungle trying to be controlled here by NIP. They've got... I don't think they've actually bought any trinket upgrades. Just the baseline tier 2 sweeping trinkets so far. You know what's cute? What? Uh, the fact that Freeze went full Infinity Edge afterwards and didn't bother with the Last Whisper. Because I think they're safe just saying they have the armor shred from Nuke Duck's Black Cleaver. And therefore, a lot of the stuff is hitting harder. They gotta worry about a potential steal here. I think it's the only way TTD gets back in the game. And they've gotta try for it. Ziggs spamming away. NIP 
They are staying in the Baron pit. They're mostly going for this one. There's one ward left in, and that gets swept out. It's going to be a jump in here, actually, oh, from Solo Zero. Sunny taking a bunch of pain, goes down. Bonaparte jumped on as well. Another kill picked up. Nightmare now in the front lines. Can they find more? Nuke Duck looks for Snow in the back line. Has crits available. One. Woo. Jump now back on the other side. Dominant. It's going to be another kill going down. Nightmare has nowhere to go, and Nuke Duck going to pick up a double kill. Phantom Joe left alive. Not much longer. Ace. For NIP 16 to 5. Nuke Duck didn't even bother using his ultimate in that fight. He just started hitting people because he has so many items. Completely destroyed them. NIP is way ahead. This is the last push for you. There you go. Another inhibitor. Gonna be the target right now. NIP taking the top lane now. I wouldn't be surprised to see a surrender because 20 seconds to go to most of the team comes up. And there it is. 34 minutes, 50 seconds. Ninjas in pajamas. One game away from the Challenger Finals. 17,000 gold. I think if we were to look at the Challenger series before it started, you would have said NIP is the favorites going in. Yeah. When they did start playing their games, though, you would have thought otherwise because they had a very slow start to this Challenger series. Yeah. Uh, ever since they lost that first game to SK Gaming Prime in the last round, they've been unstoppable. Yeah, and, and it was so weird to look at them because you're like, okay, well, they're getting outplayed, they're losing some mm -hmm. of their lanes, their decision making is a little bit awkward, and then they like stomp game two and three. Mm -hmm. This one was like they got very far ahead just from lane. You could tell their yeah. individual skill, three of their players, in Chandra solo queue right now, and IP okay. going at it, right? They know they got yeah. dropped out, and they've dedicated themselves, playing a lot of league, right? Playing together as a team. They've even been playing rank fives. In case they don't make it here, they'll make it to the second series. Mm. NIP dedicating themselves to making this, and we're seeing we're seeing it pay off. Yeah, we're absolutely seeing the results. I mean, Nuke Duck in particular, that was an incredibly impressive Zed. Yeah. He, he picked it late. You do see Zed fairly frequently against Zig, so that's not too big of a surprise matchup. I thought he was going to have a bit more trouble killing Mundo in the late game. <laughs> nope. But absolutely not. Even though the rest of his team played very well, you know, Zoro Zero did die a lot, but he pulled a lot of map pressure up there as yeah. well. You know, just the bottom lane being able to crush so well, like pretty much everyone on that team had a large impact. Yeah, you talk about all the lanes pushing, so one of them's going to go yeah. down, but the rest are okay, and you saw that. They all kind of helped each other. Exactly. Yeah. Zoro Zero pulled all, the, pulled all the ganks, still worked out for his team. Mm -hmm. Guys, we got to take a quick break. But when